Today it's going to be about some OTF knives, of course, because that's my new interest. And I have done some unbelievable research. And I still have questions. And I am going to put up links to other channels to kind of back up what I'm saying. All right, and I'm going to show you something, and we're going to do a little comparison also. So if you're looking for eating, well, there ain't no eating. A restaurant, there won't be no restaurant. We'll be at the Wolf Den, and we're going to be talking out the front now. Sitting in the wolf den, priority mail. Thank you very much, Blade Ops. Well, I went there originally, and the ones that I wanted were sold out. They had a, a Tonto blade, kind of a really not radical Tonto blade, but I'm just not into that whole Tonto blade thing. So here we go. This is these new knives that are talked about by kind of a select group on YouTube. I've come to the realization that one-handedness for me is like fantastic. Really fast one-handedness. Because in all reality, if I'm doing something, especially on my boat or whatever, I'm always, I was doing something with the other hand. Nice case. Nice case, Blade Ops. And we're going to get to how these knives and what I really think. What is going on? Because no one, no one has heard of SOS knives. Save our ship. <laughs> well, and uh, what I learned on YouTube in other places... United States, we say, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. So pretty damn nice case. Actually one that I would probably even use. I'd even use this case. You know, a lot of those super cheapy, um, super cheapy, uh, uh, what do you call it? Super China knives, you know, with the 440 steel and all that come with really crap cases with these giant buckles and everything. So here's the SOS knife. That's the belt clip, of course. Everybody says, oh, not impressed with the belt clip. I don't get impressed by belt clips because I don't even really use them. And we'll discuss that later. This is a step up for $99 at Blade Ops. This is a step up, supposedly, from all these cheap China knives like the Lightning, which is one of my all-time super favorites, because this one is 35. But look at the similarities here. Let's pop it out for the first time. It's actually a little smaller. Let me show on belt clip side. It's actually a little smaller, which is okay with me because when I get a knife, I EDC the living hell out of the damn thing. All right. So that's the first thing I liked about it. These, you just can't beat them. You can't beat these $35 Lightning Elites especially. All right, they come with a two-tone blade, simple, simple pocket clip. We'll talk about that later. So here is the big deal. Instead of 440, like it says right there, D2. D2 tool steel. Nice button, looks like a milled button, milled handles. I'm actually gonna take this apart, but not necessarily in this video. Okay, no two-tone blade. 
Eh. <laughs> People were saying this thing's sharp. Eh. I'm going to make this thing a whole lot sharper. Let me get a piece of newsprint paper here. Really super flimsy. It kills me when everybody uses this heavy duty printer paper. I mean, come on, of course. You could take a, a lightly sharpened butter knife and probably cut that heavy duty printer paper. So, let's see. <laughs> this thing is going through the wicked edge. There ain't no two bits about it. Yeah, I don't call that sharp. Nah. That is not even what I would refer to as sharp. So, what do we conclude? It's not very sharp. It's okay. It's It doesn't feel wickedly fast coming out. It goes in, it seems like faster than it comes out. D2, 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 D2. I got a question to ask knife guys. Whatever happened to AUS 8? Whatever happened to VG-10? All considered extreme budget steals now. You know, but it was good enough for Spyderco. A lot of knives were made out of VG-10 for Spyderco. I guess it has to be a China thing. Let's look at the wiggle. Good amount of wiggle. Up and down, up and down. Not that much side to side. It fills the gap, the hole in there very well. So these will definitely be going on the wicked edge. Here's a second one. I got two because when the going gets good, the tough have spares. We'll give a second feel here. That one actually feels fast. That feels a little... I like the stiff springs. That one feels faster. I like that one better. So This one's a little slower for some reason. I guess it's okay. You know, $99. All milled. I'm going to take them apart. But like I said, not on this video. That'll be a second video probably. I'm going to sharpen these. These really aren't that sharp. If somebody thinks that's sharp, then they've never seen Wicked Edge sharp. I'm going to be very careful here. Not great. Not, well, a little better here. Not great. I'm going to put some, some uh, diamonds to these. So let's switch over to the talking hands portion of this video. And we'll look at these and do a better comparison. All right. Now this is what you're used to. Talking hands. But let's get back to the reason I bought one of these. I did a lot, lot of discussion with the other Talking Hands guys. Pretty good thickness of the old D2. But here's my Lightning Elite. What really keyed me in on this SOS knife is the size. I like the squareness of this Lightning. I don't know. Everybody talks about their hands. I have no earthly idea. I go to put in buy large gloves and I can't even get my goddamn hand in it. And I don't even consider myself big handed. I mean, I don't have those sausage fingers. I don't, I've seen some serious sausage fingers on YouTube, man. Guys that they ought to put their hands on a diet. I like it fills my hand. What that 
with those micro techs and stuff, those ultra techs, they're just so skinny. I don't like them skinny, skinny knives. So the minute I saw this, and as a fan of the $35 Lightning, I said, wow, look, that is so much similar. Now the blade, look at the blade, it's just a skosh, if that's really a word in the English dictionary. That is very similar. The Lightning is a little longer. One thing about the Lightning is I don't worry about, oh geez, you know, all these guys on YouTube, they complain about the cheap steals because they're a bunch of spoiled brats. You know, but when I was a kid, 440 or something like this, it's kind of like all we had. I mean, what else did you really have? That's how I grew up, all right? 440. 420, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a steel, super steel guy. And what, what concerned me for the way I carry these knives is they were talking about the height of this button. And when you look at it against the lightning, lightning's a little, it's the same. It's basically the same except the lightning is if you took this button here and you just pushed on it and made it a little wider and a little flatter. Can't hardly tell the difference if you can all see that. So the way I carry things determines what I buy. I will never be probably sticking this in my pocket. Probably never. And it's square and it's a little shorter, which is fine, which is fine with me. But here's my question. No one, no one, even though some of these guys I think are getting these knives for either free or sent around to do their hand, talky hand videos, they never ask. I guess maybe I need to call them and ask them. Where did Blade Ops get these? Did these are these a new China brand from China? I mean, where did these come from? Because obviously Blade Ops is the only ones that have them, or is Blade Ops having these made? Maybe they're having them made, or these are. Just they're rebranding them. I do not know, just like the rest of these guys do not know. No sharpening choil, really. Very, very minute. But look at sort of the sharpening choil on a lightning. On a lightning. There's a lot going for these lightnings versus a lot of other knives. It's just the steel that holds everybody back. But I mean, good. God, is that fast and smooth because I take my lightnings apart and I clean them when I get them. Probably the same thing I'm going to do with these two. And then I fill the inside with dry lubricant. It doesn't seem like it's dry, but it eventually dries out and it just makes everything so smooth. But the next video will be me probably taking these apart after they're sharpened and show you the difference. I'm going to find the degree edge on here. Whatever the degree is here, whatever it turns out to be, I don't care. I want all of my knives at 20 degrees on each side. And I like having a mirrored edge to an extent. See? This really pops because of the fact that it's black. That's the reason I like the black, because I like to see my mirror or my polished edges. Sheath, I like the sheath, to tell you the truth. 99.9% .9 of the time, these knives come with a sheath and people just go, okay, that's good for the garbage. So I'll probably do a sharpening video in the future here. Possibility. Those videos don't get any views either. Oh, and no, let me remember. Well, 
Don't forget to like this because I think I just might call Blade Ops or I'll email them and ask them, what's the story? There's always a backstory of where did these come from? Are these a house brand? They got plenty of movement. That, not that that bothers me because as I say in a lot of my comments to other guys, I'm not gutting a moose or anything like that. But let me tell you a little follow-up from a video that I did before when I was talking about what would I really rather have? A knife that I like the egronomics of it, the blade shape, the width, the whole nine yards, and the price compared to a Microtech Ultratech, which I don't have any longer, but I did in that video. And actually during, while I was doing that video where I was comparing a $35 knife compared to a $300 knife, I sold it. Well, the other day, I kind of mistakenly ordered four lightning dagger blades that had a half serration. It was a lightning dagger, half serrated, half serrated dagger blade. I kind of didn't really think about it. And I ordered four of them off of Knives Dash Direct, I think it was called. Came wickedly fast. It's like a giant wholesale website or something. And I went to sharpen them. And they didn't, the blade, you know, on the wicked edge goes in the vise like this. Well, when you've got that dagger and here's the edge and it gets real fat and then real skinny again, there's a real problem grabbing onto it with the vise. A real problem. And I got them, a couple of them, kind of sharp, but they're just never really, they're a piercing blade. And I'll tell you something, it took months and months and months to sell a Microtech Ultratech. And yesterday, I posted those lightning dagger blades on a forum that's all about boating called the Hull Truth, H-U-L-L -L, Truth. The Hull Truth. I've been a member of that forum for eons. There's so much for sale, so much information. And I posted them on there. And they were all four, two sets of two for 48 bucks. Because I got them dirt cheap. So I sold them dirt cheap with free shipping. And they were gone before noon. Two sets of two. That's the difference. 90% of the time when you're selling to not knife enthusiasts, knife noobs more like probably just people who like them, they shy away as if as I would on an old uh, Microtech Ultratech because of the fact that Microtech Ultratech could be a clone or a super copy off of DH Gate or AliExpress or those China places. And mine, as I said in the past video, even said Blade Show 2020. That's the reason I even bought it. But to sell it for $255 or whatever plus shipping, nobody even wanted to come off of it. And it was an over $300 knife now. It's $310. So it took months to sell an Ultratech. And it takes less than four hours to sell four lightnings with the dagger blade. I mean, come on. Now these are selling like French fries and at a, at a carnival. And the reason being is they're machined. They got obviously nice hardware, the D2 blade, which is, it's a step up from 440. And, and I wanted to try them out because when I, like I said, when I get something like these, I press them into service, EDC these things constantly, every day, seven days a week, 
until I just get sick and tired of them. Which, something's got to come along that is really good price. I need to take these apart because I'm hearing the spring twang. That's a sign of... You were not going to hear spring twang in a dang Microtech or a $300 knife. But you can hear the spring twang. So these are super budget. No, no rattling of the button like my Microtech did. I took it out of the box and the button rattled when you shook it. For $300. I mean, come on, people. Machined aluminum. Nice black anodizing. A step up from cast. These are cast and painted. These are uh, like a enamel -y kind of painted or what do they call Baked on kind of paint. It's just not a spray paint. I can guarantee you. It's not just a spray paint. Because it's pretty durable. I got every day carrying this thing and I'm not missing any paint on it and I've been carrying it for months now. So you can check these out at Blade Ops. I paid for these. These cost me $99 each. Got free shipping and they were good enough to send it. Instead of sending it Pony Express, they sent it Priority Mail. Because what do they tell me at the post office? Priority mail is the normal mail. Anything else is subject to loss. They don't give a crap. You know, parcel post, that's like, pfft, nobody cares anymore. The girl literally told me at the post office where I go, priority mail is normal mail. And that's what the post office manager said not one of them not a lackey behind the counter but i'm gonna have to take these apart i'll do a little video of what they look like inside but that's my whole story i'm gonna put a link please watch it because that's how i made my decision i'm gonna put a link below or in the or in the card up in the corner of the torture test that two youtubers did on these knives not terribly but they tortured them enough and the funny thing is this one guy you'll know who I'm talking about with tattoos all over his hands but I'm gonna put his put his videos I'll put both of the videos the torture test and the after test after where he took it apart cleaned it up and it was just fine now of course he had the drop point and his buddy which I can't remember his name, uh, third, third generation Viking or something like that. Kind of a strange, hard to remember YouTube channel. Seems like a good guy. They, they got together. The other guy had the dagger blade, so it didn't cut as good because daggers don't cut worth a hoot. If you're into paper and you're into just wood and boxes and things, daggers don't do that great. Daggers are for this, and that's about really all it's limited to. Believe me, I know, because I tried to sharpen them on the Wicked Edge, and it was a real fail for me. So I'll put the links below of their videos. Please watch them, because that's how I made my decision. And in the meantime, if this is too rich for your blood, and of course I'll put the link to... to um, where you can get these in the video description also. I'll put a lot of information in the video description. If this is too thick for your blood, there's always the old Lightning Elite. Now, I always say the, the Elite, they come in two different, basically in the United States here. They seem to be in two different categories. Nobody knows if this is the same as the Lightning Company or since they knock each other off. They call it a Lightning Elite. This one supposedly comes from China. The true Lightnings come from Taiwan. And you can kind of tell the Taiwan ones. Remind me of the, the knives that you get 
back in the old days on a boardwalk at the beach in a carnival contest game you play. You'd win, hey, you win, and out the front knife. That's what they are. These seem a little more refined. No twang. So that's the reason why I picked this up, because they got the machined. You go and do a torture test with the lightning, because this is just kind of crappy cast aluminum. Cast versus machined. And we'll see what this is going to look like inside, because I am going to take this apart and keep it from going to wang, to wang, to wang. I'm not into that. I want to, I want to calm it down. And then of course I've got two of these to sharpen. So good God, while the wind is blowing, I've got till Tuesday until the next charter because the wind in Jacksonville, Florida has now completely ruined my Memorial Day weekend business when it comes to fishing the St. John's River Inlet. So thanks for watching. Give it a like. Come on, folks. I know you, I don't even care if you give it a dislike. It just proves you were, you watched. And I know this ran long because I had a lot. I wanted to talk about these and I wanted, I had a lot brewing because of the fact that it took me a while to make the decision. And I believe I'll be pretty happy. Once I get these babies wicked edge sharp, I believe I'll be happy. So thanks for watching. Please check the links that I will have. Click on them. Do your homework. I don't know. Hey, I understand. Believe me, I understand. In the charter business, I'll get calls. I'll go 25 charter calls. And I'll ask every single person, have you been to my website? And out of 25 people, five will go, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was at your website. I saw your website. Websites and stuff are just so out of fashion today. And I guess it can be out of fashion to click on a link in the video description. You know why? Because you're on your phone. I get it. Your phone is the world. Your life revolves around it. It's not as easy as sitting at a PC, laptop, you know, and go scroll down and click a link because the YouTube on a phone is busy, busy with stuff all over the place. And anymore, I'm just going to be doing YouTube shorts because they're the only things I ever get any views, really. So I'm going to thank the guys. Thanks to the guys who educated me for doing the torture tests and the after the torture tests and all that good stuff. The Jetty Wolf's official EDC. Come on!